All right, so I've recently decided that I need to upgrade my hoodies since I'm wearing them all the time. And so, obviously, spending $1,500 on different kinds was the only reasonable way to accomplish this. So, in this video, we're going to be testing six of these to figure out which is the best hoodie on the market and which of these is the best value for money. We're going to be looking at how each of these fit, the fabric, the construction, and then finish it off with my overall thoughts. I'm going to be honest, there were quite a few things here that really surprised me. I was hoping to get this video out a lot earlier, but here it is, smack dab in the middle of summer. I try to stick with non-technical hoodies that would better be suited to wear out. If there are some that you swear by that I didn't include, leave them in the comments and I'll look into them for part 2. Hoodies don't need much of an introduction so let's get right into it. If you appreciate the effort, hitting that subscribe button goes a long way in helping me put out more content like this. Thanks. As usual, let's start with the cheapest and work our way up. First up, we have the Champion Reverse Weave Hoodie in white. This is the OG of hoodies as Champion is credited for inventing them in the 1930s. Reverse weave technology is just a fancy way of saying the cotton grain runs sideways instead of up and down in hopes to limit shrinkage when washed. The idea was that if clothing was shrinking vertically when washing, you could cut and stitch the fabric horizontally instead to pretty much eliminate it. I found mine to still shrink minimally with the normal wash and dry cycle but with them being so oversized, I didn't notice too big of a change. For reference, I'm 5'10 and 175 pounds and went with the medium for most of the hoodies I bought. This hoodie is a boxy oversized fit, although it's been tweaked since it was originally designed to go over football pads in the 1930s. The arms leave a lot of room both in width and in length as you guys can tell by all the bunching. The slight drop shoulder makes it feel nice and relaxed, allowing plenty of mobility without feeling like you're swimming in fabric. The length of the hoodie hits mid crotch and leaves plenty of room in both the chest and the stomach area. The reverse weave fabric is super thick at 12 ounces and almost feels coarse when you first unbox it. It's a proper, proper old school hoodie. It's one of those articles of clothing where you're reminded of it being on your body at least a few times a day due to its heft. The interior is made of a super soft brushed fleece that does a better job than most at staying that way after being washed. The lining does, however, have a tendency of leaving lint all over whatever you're wearing under it, so it may be something to take into account if you're frequently taking your hoodie on and off. The finishing of this hoodie isn't the best, with a lot of loose threads, but that's to be expected. I would say the ribbing details are the stars of the construction. They're very thick and sturdy and are seen on the cuff, the bottom hem, and on the sides. They are nice and tight on the cuff, which allow them to stack well on your wrist, but are a pain to roll up if you want to wash your hands without getting the sleeves wet. The drawstrings are a hit or miss depending on your preference. While I like a clean finish, I can respect the decision to go with the frayed ends to play into that old school vintage vibe this hoodie has. The fabric having polyester does mean that it's more prone to pilling, but I haven't experienced any so far. Overall, I'm impressed. At $60, it provides a lot of quality for value, and it's regularly seen on sale closer to $40. I wish there was a version that had less branding, but it's nothing I can't live with. However, I'm not sure if I'd go with the white again, as it's so hard to keep clean. Next up we have American Giants Classic Pullover Hoodie in Agave Green in a size medium. Right off the bat, this thing oozes quality, but more on that later. I'm going to be honest, I wasn't familiar with this brand until I started doing research for this video, but I'm so glad that I found it. It's a Silicon Valley based company that was started to make clothes how they used to be made with the mission to make everything in the States. For this hoodie, everything from the cotton that's grown to the garment that's constructed is all done in America. The fit on this pullover is similar to Champion, but slightly slimmer. The length of the hoodie is longer and hits the lower crotch when pulled all the way down. The hood on this is massive. I personally love it, especially when you're trying to get a quick nap in, but it may be annoying to some people. The neckline is fairly wide and deep compared to the rest, which makes it super easy to get on and off and gives you that pop of contrast with whatever shirt you're wearing underneath. Where the Champion was a baggy fit, I'd probably categorize American Giant as a relaxed. The 100% ring spun cotton is nice and soft. It's a hefty hoodie with its 13 ounce fabric and the interior features a weird lining that's not quite terry, but not quite fleece. It's almost a combination of both that provides a softness of fleece, but without the shedding. The highlight of this hoodie is how it's constructed. It's built like a tank. The paneling on this hoodie is form meets function at its best. The panels on the elbow makes this hoodie feel bulletproof. I really like the wide cuffs and waistband that is tight enough to stay put, but not restricting when you choose to roll up your sleeves. 
The metal tip drawstrings are expected at this price point and give it a clean look. Overall, American Giant definitely lives up to its expectations. I typically throw this one on on colder days when I know I'll be outside often. At $120, it's pricey, but I think the cost per wear on this one is going to be super low considering it's built to last a lifetime. I've read nothing but good things about their customer service and their willingness to replace pieces if anything goes wrong. American Giant has a 20% off promo with email sign up that can be used to help bring the price down. At under $100, it makes it super competitive and others regularly call it the best hoodie ever made. Let's move to the Swedish based company, Askit. Askit is a favorite of mine and I love what they're doing in terms of sustainability and fashion. Their basics are unmatched for the most part and I was super excited to get this one in. The hoodie is made entirely in Portugal and comes in four different colors. This is the dark navy hoodie in a size medium and it clocks in at $120. Getting into the fit, this hoodie is on the slimmer end but not excessively so. I would say it's similar to the Raining Champs one we reviewed earlier. The sleeves hit perfectly for me, but the length is a tad short, landing at the upper crotch. Askit does offer 15 size combinations, ranging from extra small to extra large, and a pick between short, regular, or long for the length. I'm assuming Askit's goal was to make this hoodie suited for wearing out versus lounging in, hence the fit. You won't be looking underdressed at all on your night out when you pair this hoodie with a pair of light wash or gray jeans. The fabric is unbrushed, giving the 100% organic cotton a chance to shine. The inner features a fringe terry or a loop back as Askit likes to call it. The lack of kangaroo pocket gives this hoodie a minimal look. I like the look, but I find myself instinctively trying to put my phone or wallet in that pocket when I'm out, only to be reminded that it doesn't exist. The drawstrings feature a herringbone pattern and are capped with heavy metal tips, giving them a high-end look. The cuffs and hem are made of two layers, making them secure, but still allowing a bit of give to roll your sleeves up. Aska was out to make an elevated, understated hoodie, which they did a good job of accomplishing. The lack of pocket, the way it fits, and the colors Aska offers shows that this hoodie is more at home at Sunday brunch rather than lounging around at home. It comes in at $120 before shipping, but I really like what it offers. If you're not into the streetwear or oversized look when you wear a hoodie out, the Askit one provides a great dapper alternative. Raining Champs is always in the discussion whenever the word best hoodie are thrown around. The Canadian company makes the mid-weight Terry pullover hoodie in Vancouver. It's a Reddit favorite, so I was stoked to get it in and give it a shot. I opted for a medium in this khaki colorway. Let's start with the fit. I would classify this as a fitted hoodie. Not skin tight, but there's minimal excess fabric throughout. The length of this hoodie hits upper to mid crotch and the hood is a normal size. I don't think there's much room to layer a sweater under this, but it works perfectly with the t-shirt that I normally wear. Look into sizing up if you want more of a classic slouchy fit, but I went true to size so this hoodie could look good dressed up or dressed down. There are four different fabric textures on this. The main body of the hoodie is a smooth cotton. The cuffs, waistband, and sides are a ribbed elastic. The inner is terry and the inside of the hood is a tightly ribbed but not quite elastic material. The fabric is 100% pre-shrunk cotton and hasn't peeled one bit since I received it. This hoodie is built super well with no loose threads or other signs of poor workmanship. The flat lock seams give it a deconstructed look and help differentiate the paneling. Some edges of the seams are slightly distressed and the flat tonal drawstrings don't stand out much giving it a much more minimal feel. This is another really good hoodie especially if you're slimmer and taller. I personally gravitate toward this one for chillier indoor spaces and it's one of my go-tos for spring and fall. At the end of the day, it's a really, really good basic, but it comes in at $145. In terms of value, I think the Aska one may slightly edge this one out, coming in at roughly $25 cheaper. Up next, we have Lady White Co. I was able to get my hands on two of their hoodies in a size medium, the Classic Fit hoodie and the Super Weighted hoodie. While the classic fit one was super nice, I want to focus this review on this weighted one in the deep cement colorway. Lady White Co. has been featured before on the channel, but they're an American made company that makes everything in Los Angeles. This hoodie has that trendy oversized but crop look. However, it isn't as short as most cropped hoodies as the length lands upper to mid crotch. They give it that crop look by making the kangaroo pocket super tall, the top of which almost hits my chest. By using raglan sleeves, you also get that drop shoulder look without there being an actual shoulder seam. 
There's a fine line where oversized fits start to look slouchy, but Lady White Co. tiptoes it perfectly. I really like the look and fit, and it's great paired with joggers or denim. This hoodie has an 18 ounce, heavyweight, ring spun fabric with the French terry interior. It's warm when you need it to be, but the lack of fleece means you won't be sweating if you wear it in between seasons. The outer is smooth to the touch, and with it being 100% cotton, it shouldn't peel. It's stiff when you first get it, but it gets softer and softer the more you wear and wash it. My absolute favorite thing about this hoodie is the way it's constructed. Every stitch is impeccable, but I especially love the overlocked edge on the hood. It's a subtle detail, but it makes it look so much cleaner. It might be the simplest hoodie here, but it's done extremely well. Coming in at $220, it's pricey for sure, but if this lasts me 10 years, then I don't mind spending $22 a year to enjoy a hoodie that fits well and is constructed to perfection. Let's move on to John Elliott. John Elliott is an American designer who is known for his high-end, minimal streetwear. The villain hoodie is likely John Elliott's most popular item and was all the rage back in 2016 when a ton of celebrities were seen wearing it. I got this one off John Elliott's sample cells in a size 3, which is equivalent to a large. I didn't have a chance to try it on, but every review I read said these fit pretty snug, so I'm really glad that I sized up. The medium would have been skin tight considering the large fits like a normal. This hoodie is super long, hitting my upper quads. The chest is roomy, but the stomach area is a bit slim with the zippers almost all the way down. You could always unzip the sides to allow a bit more room if needed, but you can't really go too high without it starting to look funny. The fabric on this hoodie is super soft and is the most lightweight of the bunch we have here. This hoodie is made entirely in Los Angeles and the finishing is superb. The trademark feature of this are the two Riri zippers on the sides. Just zipping them up and down is super satisfying. The hidden pockets are also a very cool feature, but I don't find myself using them often since you have to pull the zips all the way up to access them. The hood on this is short and wide, causing it to look conical once you actually put it up. Although the hoodie is quite dated in terms of style, it felt wrong leaving this off the list because of how widespread it was just a few years ago. It's a bit too streetwear for me, but I can respect it for what it is. It's $268 at retail, but a quick Google search will show you options as low as $120 from sites like Saks Off Fifth and Nordstrom. But even then, I'm not sure if it's worth it unless you're really into the aesthetic. We're jumping all the way up to $850 for this Saint Laurent hoodie. This is practically a uniform for celebrities at the airport, but is it really worth the price and the hype? To be transparent, I bought this one secondhand for $250 off of ground and opted for a size large. Saint Laurent in general tends to fit much slimmer than most brands and this hoodie is no exception to that rule. I had to size up, but even then it fits like a very slim medium. I would recommend to go up one or two sizes, but try to go into a store and try one on if possible. The arms and overall length are both fairly long. This is also a 100% cotton hoodie with a coarse terry on the inside. It's a great year round hoodie that's a good balance of being thin and keeping you warm. My initial thoughts were, wow, this is super similar to Ask It in terms of construction. Everything from the fabric to the metal tips to the cuffs were very similar. The cuffs and hem on the Saint Laurent are tighter compared to Ascot. The placement of the kangaroo pocket is also fairly low, giving the illusion of longer torso. The reason this hoodie costs so much is for this screen printed logo. That being said, I like how it's minimal enough for most people not to notice, but if you know, you know. Unless you want a designer hoodie for the flex, I'd skip this one personally. The Ascot hoodie gives you 95% of what this one offers and you can get one in each color and still have nearly $400 left over. If you really want the hoodie and want to save some money, sites like Grailed and Saint Laurent Facebook groups have them for around three to $400. All right, six hoodies later, let's wrap it up. None of these were a bad purchase and I think design will play a huge role as to what people end up choosing. If I were to rank these, for what I gravitate toward the most, I'd give Lady White Co. the top prize and tie Ask It and American Giant for second because I genuinely can't decide between the two. Champion would get my third spot, followed by Reigning Champ, John Elliott, and then Saint Laurent. The only reason I ranked Reigning Champ so low was because I couldn't justify it at $145 when Ask It gives you the same package at $25 less. Keeping budget in mind, Although Champion gives you everything you need at $60, if you have the means, splurge a bit and get the American Giant one. 
With a 20% off code they provide for email signups, the price comes down to $96. For roughly $40 more, I think it will hold up twice as long and the fabric is twice as good. I'll keep more of these videos coming in the future. If you appreciate the effort, hitting that subscribe button goes a long way in helping me put out more content like this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.